Okay, this is one of the newest bikes from Engway called the 275 ST. So in today's video, we'll unbox it, we'll test it, and I'll try to give you all the information you need to make a wise decision if you think it's worth buying. All right, looks like this is gonna be the rack for the back tire. I've never had a major damage on one of these e-bikes. They're typically very well transported and a lot of zip ties you have to unzip. Looks like not a lot of cushioning on the saddle, so just an uneducated guess that it might be a little uncomfortable. So assembly instructions, this is probably the charger. The charger output is 42 volts at 3 amps, so it's about 150 watts charging. It's important to note that this is a 36 volt battery. The charger is always set a little higher than that, but this is a 36 volt battery. That's gonna be enough for this integrated motor. This is one of the first bikes I think Engwe have that has not a rear motor, but a mid-mounted motor. So we're gonna take a good look at that later. You also get some tools, great. What is this? Oh, Jesus. So instead of an electronically driven horn or whatever you would call this, it's, it works like that. That's really cool, it looks great. A super small rear light that you activate by pushing on the actual light. So here you have the splash guard for the front tire. It isn't obvious that you get splash guards with Engway bikes. Some of the Engway bikes that I've had, they don't come with splash guards, which is super frustrating. So it's nice seeing it come with this. I gotta say, the white with the orange looks sick. It's a little dirty on some places. I don't like that, but right, let's get it fully out from the package. The bike stand on all these electric bikes comes off, so pro tip, take some Loctite, dip the screws in the sauce, and put it in. It will be shipped like this with the mount facing backwards. Just undo these screws and rotate it 180 and put the screws back in. About there, I guess. Now let's get this front tire in place. So the axle that sits on the front forks is just for transportation. You can put it aside. Then you obviously put the disc brake on the same side as the brake caliper. I didn't even realize at first, but this seat is not that stupid. I was looking for a wing nut or something that you would be able to adjust the ride height on the go, as you would like to do at times. But this has some kind of a hydraulic mechanism to it. So if you push this lever, it will automatically go up. And if you push down simultaneously as pushing the lever, you can push it down into place again. That's really, that's really brilliant. Range test in not optimal conditions. Two degrees Celsius and a seven meters a second wind. I'm gonna use pedal assist. We'll do about 25 kilometers an hour all throughout the test. Let's see the range. It's fully charged. We have done one kilometer and we're in tour mode. Let's go. Okay, 21 kilometers in, still full battery. This is gonna be a long run. We're now 30 kilometers in and it just takes forever. And on top of it, we're still full battery. So I might bump it up to turbo. Yes, there is another mode called turbo. There's a great bicycle road, so... Oh my... F I almost died. Dude, that looks sick. Look at that. Woo! It's day two, we have completed 60 kilometers. The saddle is uncomfortable as fuck. The only thing that's a bit worrisome is that we went from four out of five bars in battery down to just two out of five left very rapidly. And that's very common with a lot of bikes. Total range, 72 kilometers. The battery has been blinking for the past 10. So I think this is a good time to stop it. We were out for many, many hours and it's the worst conditions 
possible. I bet if it was summer less windy, this could totally have been double the range easily. About six months ago, I did a long range test on my X26 from Engway and I did 121 kilometers, which is pretty insane. However, that in some way felt shorter than the measly 72 kilometers, which is still pretty good on this bike. And the simple answer is, it's a lot slower as it's fully legal in most European, if not all the European countries, as I know, you can only do 25 kilometers an hour and you have to pedal all the time in order for the motor to activate, which is the legal requirements. You can also not have a throttle, a thumb throttle to moped the bike. You have to pedal all the time. That's one of the requirements. And that made the 72 kilometers on this feel longer in some way because it took almost the same amount of time as I could go faster on the X26. That's not to say that 25 kilometers an hour is slow. I'm used to a little higher speed, but most people, 25 kilometers an hour, that's probably more than enough. And yes, again, in better conditions, I have no doubt in my mind that this could do way better than 72 kilometers. It could probably reach three digits. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised at all. So first of all, there is not much suspension. You have the thicker and larger tires than usual. They don't really help. Also, I made them pretty hard just so I could go further. But there's no other suspension really, and so you feel the bumps. It's not bad as you're going on asphalt 99% of the time with this bike, um, but you should know there's no suspension really. The steering felt great. I like the headlight on the front. It doesn't follow the steering. The disc brakes, I have no complaints with. They locked in really nicely. The only thing I would mention with the gear shifter, it could be a little rocky at times. It could kind of snap onto the gear, which you can hear in this video. It makes it feel a little cheaper as I haven't had that problem on any Engway bike before. I think the pro version of this has a different gear manufacturer as well as a different manufacturer for the motor uh, in, at the pedals. The screen is tiny. It does give you all the information that you need, but it's tiny and you have to scroll through it. I wish it was as big as on all the other Engway bikes. The frame I think looks pretty sick. The color scheme is great and it just looks stylish. I think what I would do is put some kind of basket in the rear as you probably can't fit a basket up front. So if you want to carry a bunch of stuff, you're either going to have to use a backpack or you could mount some kind of box in the rear. I would probably do that. The motor gets an A plus in my book, mostly because I've never used a mid mount motor before, but it really does work. It's insane. When you want to go faster, it knows it. When you want to keep the speed constant, it knows it. When you want to pedal really slowly inside a town where a lot of people are walking, you can go really slowly. The torque sensor that notifies how fast or hard you're pedaling really seems to work. That's all I can say. Now keep in mind, there is a ST version, it's this one, and there's a Pro version. I believe as there isn't too much information, this bike hasn't been released yet, but I think the Pro version has a completely different manufacturer on this motor. But I can tell you right away, this seems great. I, I like it a lot. I just want to point out real quick that on the side you have the charging port as well as a keyhole for when you want to... Pull the battery out. Super easy to take out. I know a lot of people will appreciate that so you can store the battery at a lower level and just bring up the battery to your apartment and charge it. And also I can confirm that it's 36 volt, 19.2 amp hours. So that's about 700 watt hours. That's not too bad. Also, I think I mentioned during the range test that the original saddle isn't very comfortable. So you might wanna get some kind of cushion for it so you can ride a lot longer. Now, something I found truly interesting, and you're gonna to wanna to hear this, is that a rather light bike with a 36 volt battery, and I give it to them, a mid-mounted motor, that's nice. Yet, this is gonna sell for almost the same price as the X26. I know that's a ridiculous comparison, but the X26 has two 48 volt batteries, one 19 amp hour and one 10 amp hours. 
that's about 1400 watt hours of battery. Exactly double the size of this battery. And it's going to be the same price range. The X26 has a 1200 watt motor. It weighs like 50 kilograms. It's robust as it got like 10 ways of suspension and a full colored screen. It goes way faster and further. And it's going to be the same price. Although at the same time, it makes total sense. If you go out on Bil, Tema, which is one of the cheapest manufacturers of e-bikes in Sweden, just one of those hardware stores where you can buy e-bikes, and you go out and check out their finest model of e-bike, it's about the same price as this. However, you're getting a significantly smaller battery. So maybe it's a good deal. All in all, I really like the bike, it works great. Also, I think it has one of the largest battery packs on a fully legal bike on the market right now. And they claim 260 kilometer range in eco mode. The funny thing about the eco mode is that the top speed is about 10 kilometers an hour. So yes, you could probably travel 260 kilometers, but you would have to do it in 10 kilometers an hour. So it would take you quite a while, but you could probably do it. But that's also one of the things they say, you know, hey, you can just charge it once a week and you will be fine for, you know, seven days. And I fully believe so. So that's my review of the P275 from Engwe. If you enjoyed it, check it out in the description. Okay, see you again in the next one. Bye.